Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to explore the concept of an object, like a spherical object, being illuminated by a radiation source. For example, this could be the sun, and this could be the moon or the earth or some other planet, or any star or any planetary system. How do we calculate the amount of radiation received by that object? And of course, you can see that if it's illuminating the equator, then you can see that the radiation is perpendicular to the surface, but at other places on the object, you can see that the radiation is not perpendicular to the surface, so we have to take that into account, and that's what's called the cosine factor. So let me explain. To make it simple to see, we'll take a small little strip of width w, and length pi times r, and if we take that little strip and we bend it into a semi-spherical shape, so now that it looks like this, and the sun or the, the radiation source is illuminating that strip, you can see that we have direct perpendicular radiation right here at the equator, but towards the pole regions you can see that the, the radiation has very much less of an effect because the angle between the radiation and the perpendicular to the surface. So what we're going to do here is try to figure out how to calculate the total amount of radiation received by such a strip when it's bent into a semispherical shape, so that the length is equal to pi r, which of course is half a complete circle of 2 pi r, the width is still w, and notice we can then take a look at a small segment of that strip, we'll call that small segment a dA, notice that we have an angle of theta between the horizontal and the uh, the line connecting the center of the circle with that small little dA. We have a small little change in the angle d theta, and we have a width right here. So dA is equal to the width times the length. The length is going to be r times d theta. The effective area then, the amount of area that sees the radiation, so to speak, then must be multiplied times the cosine of theta. Notice when the theta is 90 degrees, there is no radiation hitting the surface because the, per the perpendicular to the surface is perpendicular straight up, and the radiation is horizontal, so the angle is 90 degrees, cosine of 90 is equal to zero. But the effective amount of radiation hitting any portion of that strip is going to be equal to the dA multiplied times the cosine of theta. So dA times the cosine of theta gives us the effective dA, which is therefore equal to R WR d theta, which is the area on the strip, the small little area segment, times the cosine of the angle. And now if we want to then calculate the total radiation on that strip, what we need to then do is say that the area is going to be equal to the integral of the d area, the effective area, from 0 to, let's say, pi over 2. And since that's only half the strip, we have to multiply times 2 to get the whole strip. So this is going to be equal to 2, now these are constants, w times r, times the integral from 0 to pi over 2, which is 90 degrees, of the cosine of theta times d theta. Now the derivative of the sine is the cosine, therefore the integral of the cosine is the sine, so this becomes equal to 2wr times the sine of theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. When I plug in the lower limit, I get 0. Plug in the upper limit, I get 1. So this is equal to 2wr. How does that relate to my original strip? If I now make a new strip, and I make the strip like this, and I make the strip still of a width w, but now of the height of 2 times r, notice that this height, 2r, is equal to this height, 2r, because if I draw a line from there to there, that's equal to the radius of that circle. If I draw a line from there to there, that's also equal to the radius. So the total length here is 2r. So the amount of radiation that a strip like this receives when it's bent into a semi-spherical shape, you get, or semi-circular shape, I should say, that amount of radiation is equal to the strip of size 2r in length and w in width that has direct perpendicular relationship to the radiation coming in. But in other words, the entire surface here is perpendicular to the radiation, so we have full maximum radiation in the strip. So the amount of radiation that a curved strip of length pi times r receives is the same as the radiation strip receives of length 2r. Now, of course, pi r is bigger than 2r, but that's because it's not as effective at the top and the bottom region. 
The reason why I showed you this relationship here is that when we think about a circle as well as a spherical object, the question is how much radiation does a spherical object receive? Notice at the equator regions that are facing the radiation source, we get direct direct contact without per perpendicular contact, the most effective radiation received. But in the polar regions, you can see that the angle is much different here. There's a lot less radiation received on the surface because of the angle. And we can say that the amount of radiation received by a spherical object is the same as a cross-sectional cut down the middle. If we take a look at that cross-sectional cut, and we then take a look at what that looks like, the cross-sectional cut. The area here is equal to pi r squared, even though the surface area of this is, of course, 2 pi r squared. If you take a look at the surface area of a sphere, half the sphere is 2 pi r squared. But the effect of radiation received is as if you had a, a flat, circular object shape with the area of pi r squared. And we're going to use that concept then to continue with our videos on how objects are receiving radiation and how spherical objects act like flat objects when we think about the amount of radiation received to be the effect of radiation received because of the what we call the cosine factor, the portion of the, the portions of the sphere that are curved away from the radiation so that there is a lot less effective radiation received at the polar regions versus the equator region. So let's keep that in mind and let's now go to the next videos to see how we utilize this information.